every year we have a buzzword which suddenly becomes a part of our lingo while the last decade was a very simple time with yolo and selfie being a part of the pop culture suddenly in 2021 we saw the words like web3 and nfts being very very general and now suddenly we have this new term called daos decentralized autonomous organizations becoming very popular in twitter and i feel that's the biggest key takeaway of web3 so today i've got cash cash runs the super team dao so firstly how's your experience like when did you start working on daos uh so i first became aware of daos back in 2016 Uh, it's actually the reason I got into cryptocurrencies in the first place. As some of your viewers will know, uh, there was a famous and infamous DAO called the DAO, the capital T, the capital uh, D A O, uh, which was like an investment club that ended up getting hacked, and it caused uh, basically it caused the Ethereum chain to fork. Right, so we had Ethereum Classic and Ethereum because of that DAO. Uh, that hack had some pretty nasty consequences in terms of people's perceptions of DAOs. So uh, the space kind of grew quiet for a little while. I remained interested in crypto. I remained interested in DAOs. And then about three years ago, um, Moloch and Meta Cartel and some of these other major DAOs started to kind of uh, surge again and brought a lot of attention into the space. So I started paying attention. Uh, I only got full time into DAOs maybe about six or seven months ago uh, myself. So I'm still relatively new in that sense. Although you know, seven months in crypto is like five years in a, in a traditional job. Yeah. Uh, so it's been a it's been a whirlwind since then. What are DAOs? There's a lot of different definitions of DAOs, uh, and because, as you pointed out, it's become a bit of a buzzword, uh, it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. I think the canonical or canonical definition of a DAO is it is an internet community with a bank account. It's the basics. DAO DAO stands for decentralized autonomous organization, and in the initial vision of these uh, DAOs are actually mentioned in the original Ethereum white paper that Vitalik and others wrote back in the day. Uh, they were meant to be these kind of decentralized protocols that mostly ran themselves and had a human component kind of tinkering around the edges, right? Uh, today, that is still probably the purest form of a DAO. Uh, and examples there would be like Uniswap and SushiSwap and some of these other DeFi protocols. However, DAOs have also evolved to now really refer to any kind of internet community uh, that organizes either around a treasury or around a token or at some point plans to. Uh, so you see a lot of new and interesting experiments which are not really based on decentralized protocols. For example, Friends with Benefits is among the best known in the space. Uh, there are social DAO, right? It's just a bunch of people kind of coming together who are interested. in the intersection of culture and crypto. Uh so there's no again there's no protocol kind of powering that necessarily but it's a community that organizes around the FWB token. Uh so that's mm-hmm. roughly what a DAO is but you ask in 6 months the definition might change a little bit again. Of course, uh of there's course. a lot of different ways. Because it's decentralized do DAOs lack hierarchy? Uh I think in a dream world there would be less hierarchy. I don't think you can ever fully remove hierarchy from people who are working together on things uh but as uh we like to say at super team right decentralization is not uh the absence of leaders it's the abundance of them so you said this very interesting thing in a video with tanmay that employees are the margins of an organization and that's one line i'll be very honest that has stayed with me ever since so can you explain this for the audience and also tell us how is dao solving for this so here's like the basic premise right let's say you work at a at a major bank like jp morgan and jp morgan has a bunch of different ways that they make money but the in order to make that money they need people to go and do it right so the obvious incentive for traditional organizations is let's pay people as little as possible uh, and then we can capture all of the profit that we make above their salaries basically as Uh, as profit. That's obviously dramatically oversimplified, but the basic point is uh, the more they can charge for your labor, the less that they can give you, the more value capture that the abstract yeah. legal entity is able to take in. DAOs kind of are a fundamental rethinking of who has power and who should benefit from uh work that groups of people are doing. So in a traditional company, it is the abstract legal entity and the shareholders. Most DAOs are more similar to co-ops, right? Uh, to cooperatives, workers cooperatives, where the people who are creating the value are also the ones who kind of capture mm-hmm. that value rather than it getting passed along to somebody okay. else. The reason why some of the organizations are way bigger and the reason why an employee cannot ever be as big as the organization is because of a information asymmetry and access asymmetry, right? How does DAO solve for that? 
So the information asymmetry is a, is a tricky one that DAOs are still figuring out, but at a very base level, uh, it is inherent in the culture of a DAO to focus on transparency and accountability wherever possible. So in many DAOs, uh, governance decisions, as they're called, happen on chain, literally on the blockchain, which are fully public that anyone inside or outside of the DAO can kind of view. So that helps to create more uh, information transparency. On the access asymmetry, DAOs are taking a lot of interesting approaches to kind of attracting talent and letting that talent contribute. So for most DAOs, there are ways that you can contribute without necessarily being a full-time employee, having to do this rigorous interview process and so forth. There's a lot of low-hanging fruit of ways that you can contribute. Many DAOs are open by default such that anybody can join. Hmm. Other DAOs are gated only by uh, holders of the token. So if you just buy a token for you know, $10, $20, you can join the Discord uh, and start to contribute there as well. Uh, so dramatically reducing the barriers to entry uh, is, a, is a key part of DAOs. And it's why we at Super Team and many other DAO builders are very bullish on DAOs, because it turns out that if you are nice to people, you tell them what's going on, you give them all the information transparency, and you make it easy for them to contribute, that's where most talent likes to go. That's how most talent likes to work. Yeah. I saw this, uh, read this article by Linda, where one guy was saying that I got paid $180,000 for a community manager job, which has been the highest ever in my decade. So role of community managers in this DAO space. In Web3, what we're going to see is that marketing, as it is traditionally known, starts to kind of peter away. The era of paying for Facebook pay-per-click ads or buying billboards and kind of stuff uh, just does not work as natively. Instead, what we have found in the crypto world is that when you have a community that really cares about a project, they will be your marketing evangelists. Rather than having to pay people to click on your landing page, you have a community that is naturally incentivized, either through a token or through the culture and atmosphere of the DAO, uh, to go and spread its message and bring more people into it, right? Uh, so that's why people are willing to pay so much for community managers, because a good community manager could be the difference between a project that succeeds and fails. If you can't get the community organically excited, you cannot purchase loyalty uh, but you can create it by developing a really vibrant community. So my advice to anybody who's listening to this, who is kind of thinking about a career switch or maybe is interested in Web2 marketing, wanting to break into Web3, go learn as much as you can about community management. That means spending time in the different DAO communities. That means understanding practices from uh, other areas like labor unions, like uh, protest movements and so forth, where organic communities develop. Uh, and it means, you know, giving it a try. Start building your own miniature communities start small, it might just be you and five or six friends who are interested in crypto. Mm -hmm. uh, just managing that community yourself as a small scale experiment will give you tons of insight into how uh, larger communities might operate. So for super team, right? The network and the distribution that the founders had that really helped because it's attracting the top talent across India. But if someone wants to start a new DAO, what are a few ethics and principles, which will, you know, really make it extremely attractive, like a person who has never heard of that founder would still want to work for that now. Yeah, so I think there's a few that we've kind of touched on already that come to mind, right? So certainly kind of openness is a, is a big one. Um, so allowing kind of organized chaos to develop, because that's where a lot of innovation actually relies, right? So you have to be willing to avoid the traditional structures and say like, hey, on day one, you got to do this. On day two, you got to do this. On day three, you got to do this. You have to be willing to kind of relinquish control to the community to see what the community actually wants to build, right? Uh, it's far less of a, hey, this is the, I have the map and here's how we're going to get somewhere. And far more like, hey, you guys go discover the map. You guys figure out which way we're going to go. Um, and, you know, we as kind of these servant leaders or whatever you want to call it are here just to enable that and to help that happen. Yeah. Uh, so that's a really, really important one, I think. Uh, the second one is just an investment of time. Uh, here's like the, the dirty truth. Right, audiences scale really well. One to many communication scales perfectly. Right, you make a video right now, you have you know x number of views. If you have ten x that, same amount of effort. Exactly. Community does not scale in the same way because a community is defined not between the relationship of the people at the front and the people listening in, but rather of all of the members of the community with each other. So finding ways to kind of spark those connections becomes really important, and more often than not. It is just a lot of Zoom calls. It's a lot of like meetups that happening in, uh, in person. It's a lot of like retweeting of each other so that you can show that you're supporting. Yeah. Uh, so you have to have that kind of mindset going in as well. Yeah. Uh, and then maybe the third opportunity or the third kind of principle to have in mind if you're starting your own DAO uh, is start small. A good DAO is not necessarily a bigger DAO. 
right? What you want are a few people with really strong social ties who are really going to be there and support each other rather than, oh, let's get 10,000 people into a discord and now we have a great DAO. There are many DAOs that had 5,000 members and then now they still have 5,000 members on discord, but there's like two messages a day, right? Because they didn't focus on the most important thing, which is building those connections first and foremost. One very obvious use case of a DAO can be like, I cannot afford a board ape. My hundred friends cannot afford a board ape. Let's collectively buy it and the DAO gets to own it. So how's the ownership decentralized in this case? Like, let's say if I quit the DAO, do I still own X amount of that board ape? Yeah, so there are, there are different models here um, that, that can work. Most uh, investing DAOs have some kind of uh, what is typically called a rage quit function, right? Same way if you rage quit in a video game and just like decide to walk out, uh, a lot of DAOs have mechanisms in place for that. So let's imagine that it's 100 of us and we've all co-invested in a board ape, right? In theory, uh, many DAOs would allow you to say, I will relinquish my share of that. And in return, I want you know, X dollars or X uh, USDC or whatever else it might be. Um, so you're able to redeem your fractionalized ownership share for some kind of other value. Yeah. Now, not every DAO has that in place. Uh, so in other times it might be trickier. You might have to find a secondary buyer yourself. Maybe somebody else in the community will step up and buy it. Uh, but yeah, it ends up being a lot like shares in a traditional company Got even, uh, right? Where you have like a fraction, somebody else has got to pay for it at some point, whether it's the, the DAO itself or somebody else in the market. So I'm sure the talent flows with capital and a lot of people are now constantly switching to Web3. As Indians, we love security. We are extremely risk averse and we yeah. just want something which is extremely secure. How does one have that mentality? You know, like how does one make that shift from a very secure environment to something which is very new, but has a very high asymmetric return opportunity? Uh, so I think there's, there's probably a few things here. The first one is uh, it's not for everybody, right? If you have, uh, maybe you have a lot of like lifestyle commitments. If you have, let's say children, you're supporting family or whatever else it might be. Uh, maybe you can't afford uh, the kind of the erratic pay that might come with being in a DAO landscape. That's totally fine. You shouldn't feel bad about that. It's not built for everybody. Uh, instead, it really favors people with kind of either low uh, kind of lifestyle costs, which many people in India do have, yes. or people with really large risk appetites, right? Uh, Naval has that great line that uh, we should work like lions, right? Where we uh, hunt aggressively for a short period of time and then we rest uh, as long as we need to afterwards. So if that kind of lifestyle sounds attractive to you, then working in the DAO, uh, the DAO world is really valuable. So I feel that if you are entering Web3, you need a very good safety net. So even if you suddenly jump from $10 an hour to $100 an hour, as soon as you enter Web3, you shouldn't upgrade your lifestyle like that. You need to have <laughs> savings because the thing is, that if you if you are patient enough to wait to wait for that big project until then you can rest or upskill, then your earnings can constantly compound way faster than it could have been in Web two or any other traditional company. That's right. Yeah, I think uh, crypto uh, is is home to many degenerate gamblers. You know, uh, which is kind of natural given how the space kind of works. Uh, but the degenerate gamblers don't last so long oftentimes, right? They burn bright for a short period of time and they go out. So if you are thinking about working in Web3, uh, it's worthwhile to kind of test the waters a little bit, right? The good thing is, unlike joining you know, Facebook or whatever else, we have to commit full time and dive in with both feet. Exactly. In Web3, you can kind of dip your toes into the water. So go work on a few bounties, right? Go to a few upscaling places, go to like you know, Questbook and BuildSpace and these other communities, learn a little bit, tr start to earn a little bit. And then once you feel comfortable, maybe jump right in. Uh, so excitement and passion is great, but don't be kind of foolish about it and say, I'm quitting my job. I'm moving into Web3 with no opportunities, no connections, no experience, nothing like that. Uh, it will be a tough go for you. So a lot of people who are just, you know, trying to explore the Web3, they still don't know how much they can earn if they work with these Web3 companies. So can you tell me the average pay of a community manager, a developer, or a graphic designer in these companies? There are multiple levels to this game, right? So on the small end, you have things small and kind of in quotes, you have these kind of really quick pieces of work, making memes, opening accounts, doing that kind of thing, giving product feedback, uh, entering into these contests effectively. Uh, that will pay you know, anywhere from, let's say, $10 USD to $100, $200 USD. So if you can win a few of those in a given month, maybe you're starting to build up a, a bit of an income base. The next level up would be kind of larger bounties and grants. Um, so at Super Team, all of our bounties uh, kind of start with a $1,000 USDC prize pool, right? Uh, and $1,000 is pretty good money. 
Uh, and you can you know, win one or two of those a month. And again, you're kind of sorted. The next level up is going towards kind of full on grant making, where if you have ideas for things that you want to build or create, there are tons of organizations across Web3 that want to give you money for free. They just want to see more things built. This is the advantage of having all this kind of speculative premium in the market and all these venture capitalists. There's capital everywhere. So if you have an idea, you can go off and get it. Come to Super Team. We do grant making up to ten thousand dollars. Many other places do much larger grant making as well. Mm -hmm. And then the final one is on the full time role. And the full time role is where you really start to see the difference, right? Uh, so th there are people that I've worked with that are routinely seeing two uh, x in their salary, right? Like literally doubling. A good community manager uh, can earn, let's say, sixty to seventy thousand dollars a year. Uh, a great one can, as you pointed out, it might be 180, it might be even more graphic designers, product designers, and so on. So you're looking at large numbers. And the basic underlying principle behind this is that in crypto in general, people don't care about where you live. Everything is remote. Yeah. And so in the spirit of transparency that we were talking about earlier, uh, the pay is the same, whether you live in Paris, France, or if you live in Mumbai, right? Um, so it's a real kind of arbitrage and opportunity for people who do Very live big. in India in a to country earn these like in yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like you can uh, very easily double or triple how much you're making if you're willing to go into Web3. Now, obviously, nothing comes for free, as your viewers mm -hmm. well know, right? If you're getting more reward, there's risk. And the risk here is that crypto is still a, a new industry. Uh, it's not exactly clear where it's going to be in a year or two years. I'm obviously very bullish. You're obviously very bullish. But, yes. um, you know, who knows what's going to happen? But on the bright side, even if nothing works out and it all fails, you would have gotten some experience at a high growth startup in an exciting new field that's going to set you up for all sorts of opportunities going elsewhere. So in the worst case, you get paid a lot to work on really fun and novel challenges for a short period of time. And then your, your resume is great. Your proof of work is great. And you can go back to doing whatever else you'd like. All right, Cash, thank you so much for your time. I'm sure that alongside me, all the audience, everyone got a lot of clarity about DAOs and also realized the true potential of this buzzword. Also guys, before going, please make sure to follow Cash on Twitter. Check out his website, discoverdaos.com, where you can find details about all the new and upcoming DAOs in the world. And if you're someone who wants to enter the Web3 space and is very confused about what to do, how to start, you should definitely check out our DAO super team. You can log on to the website, superteam.fun and fill the form. That's right. Join the talent network and we'll get you matched with some earning opportunities, freelance or full time, depending on what you're looking for. That's all for today, guys. Please make sure to hit the like button. And if you're new here, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.